guys, Nika here for Peak Survival. This is uh, another section about snakes in North America. We're here with uh, Jenny, our medical toxicologist, who's going to now take us through the different types of snakes and also the venoms. Thanks. So we have two main families of venomous snakes in North America. We have the pit vipers and we have the coral snakes. The pit vipers include cottonmouths, water moccasins, and rattlesnakes. Uh, and then there's three different types of coral snakes as well. Here in Arizona, we don't have cottonmouths and copperheads, so rattlesnakes are the only pit vipers we need to worry about. And they're actually the pit vipers with the most toxic venom. We do have one of the types of coral snake here in Arizona, but it's actually the smallest and most benign. And no deaths have ever been reported in humans from the bite of the snake. Uh, in fact, it's very tiny. It almost looks like a giant colorful worm. And there's a question about whether its mouth is even big enough to really be able to bite a human in order to deliver venom. Uh, there is a coral snake antivenom, which is not actually recommended for the bite of the Arizona coral snake. So you could use it if someone became very ill. But for the most part, these bites are exceedingly rare and generally exceedingly benign. Uh, but rattlesnake bites are the main ones that we worry about. Um, we've got 13 or more different species of rattlesnake here in Arizona, and those numbers are changing all the time as they realize the species aren't the same or they combine species. Sure. Um, and as we mentioned in another segment, it's not important that you know what type of rattlesnake bit you. We use the same antivenom to treat bites by all North American pit vipers. So if you're bitten by a snake, you may wonder whether you need to go to the hospital or not. And the answer is, if you think it's a rattlesnake, have any question it could be a rattlesnake, or you don't know what it is, then you should go to the hospital right away. And basically what we'll do is check some blood work and observe you for the signs and symptoms of a rattlesnake bite. And these can be delayed up to six or eight hours. So sometimes we watch you even if you're feeling fine. And that's why it's important to go in no matter what. Mm -hmm. Because tissue digestion can be occurring even when you don't feel that bad. So what does rattlesnake venom do? Uh, it affects several different parts of the body. The main thing it does is digest your tissue. So it causes bleeding, swelling, uh, large blood blisters. Uh, and if left untreated, it can also cause tissue death. So people may lose parts of their fingers, entire fingers, or even entire limbs from this tissue damage. Uh, rattlesnake venom also thins the blood. So it can cause both bleeding and clotting although bleeding is usually the most feared complication. Mm. Now luckily in the United States, severe bleeding is very rare. Uh, there's roughly 8,000 snake bites per year, and we only see a handful of deaths, and often these are from the people who have a severe bleeding reaction. Okay. So luckily this is very rare. Uh, if it happens, it usually happens very quickly and often too soon for us even to be able to treat it. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, if you get to the hospital in a timely manner, we can prevent this with antivenom. Okay. And then the last thing snake venom can do, or rattlesnake venom can do, is cause neurologic symptoms, so affect the nerves and muscles. And only certain species of snake do this, and it's actually not very common in Arizona. Uh, so the main thing we worry about is the tissue swelling and destruction of the tissue. And we want you to get to the hospital as soon as possible so we can start antivenom and prevent the digestion process. And what antivenom is, is it's actually an antibody molecule uh, that's made in an animal, either a horse, a sheep, a cow, uh, all antivenoms are different, that is administered through an IV drip and it binds up the venom and allows your body to eliminate it. It pulls the venom off the tissues. So it'll fix, uh, it'll stop the progression of tissue digestion and it'll fix whatever thinning of the blood has gone on. Uh, most people who get to the hospital quickly do very well after snake bites. Uh, the main adverse complication we see would be loss of a small amount of tissue, such okay. as a fingertip, although most people don't experience that. Sure. Uh, but the most important thing, as we've mentioned several times, is to get to the hospital right away so that we can start this aggressive treatment. Most certainly. Thank you. You're welcome.